moving into manual flight functions with the Matrice 300 RTK and H20 series. Within this video, we'll cover dual remote controllers, overall camera settings and functions for wide zoom and IR, and then subsequent follow-up videos cover intelligent functions within manual flight, including pinpoint, smart tracking, high-res grid, and then a smart inspection on the mission flight side of the app. First off, with dual remote controllers, we have the ability for two controllers each to take control of the drone. We'll see an icon indicating drone control in the FPV view and an icon in the gimbal view if you do not have gimbal control. So first off here in the FPV view, as we have two remote controllers connected, we have the aircraft that's appeared and you can see that it is blue right now. The payload view, you can see we do not have control of the payload right now because there's no options to take photos or complete functions. We see a white icon. And I think it's easiest to show these two through a quick example. So we can see right now blue aircraft indicating the aircraft control. The second remote controller takes control, thus the aircraft turns white. From this remote controller, we can take aircraft control back by tapping on that white aircraft, and now it has turned blue again. Can tap and hold the blue aircraft to lock aircraft control, so now the second controller is not able to take control. Their aircraft for the second remote controller is showing as red to indicate that controller one has lock control. They can tap on the red aircraft and the first controller will get a notification letting them know and they can choose to lock, unlock the remote controller. But ultimately, that's how the aircraft exchange here works. The remote controller is going to give notifications, it's going to have, play an audio message, and it has the visual indicator as well. Switching over to the gimbal view, it's just two options. Either have control of the gimbal, normal gimbal view, or we'll see a white gimbal icon to take control of the gimbal by tapping on that if chosen by the controller. One can, controller can control both the aircraft and the gimbal at the same time, but once again, these are the options that you have. So with the H20 series right now, first just covering some overall settings and functions. The easiest way to move the camera, besides just using the wheels on the remote controller itself for pitch and yaw or the sticks if you just have gimbal control would be doing a double tap on the screen and you can see tapping on the insulator on the right side of that bottom cross arm brings the camera to center on where the double tap occurred. Moving into these icons we briefly covered here on the top left. Just talking about what they are first. The first one gives us the ability to recenter gimbals. The second one turning the beacon on and off, that's the anti-collision beacon that we have built into the aircraft, can be useful for visibility during the day, I've definitely used it then, and for night operations. We have a daylight waiver here in the US. Dual gimbal sync, it's gonna show a blue and a yellow dot below it for gimbal one and two when they are synced together, and that allows both gimbals to move together so you can do one yaw input and both gimbals will move. So if you have a spotlight and the H20T, very useful to sync them together. See the circle with the dot in it is to turn smart tracking on and off and the pinpoint is the diamond. We'll cover these two features in depth with their own video. And then RNG stands for laser rangefinder. The display we can turn that on and off. So going in some more depth here, First, looking at the recenter gimbal menu. So we talk about yaw and pitch. Remember, yaw is going left and right. Pitch is going up and down. We can see our current gimbal yaw here, that it is centered with the aircraft because the yellow polygon indicating our current gimbal yaw is lined up with the aircraft's heading. We can see the current gimbal pitch is negative 90, which indicates straight down or nadir. If we move over to another screen shot here, we can see the gimbal pitch now we can tell is angled up much farther at 23 here, while the gimbal yaw is just slightly to the left of the front of the aircraft now. But what we can do with the recenter gimbal options is just with a click of the button, reset our gimbal's location. 
So with the gimbal going left, right, up and down, sometimes it can get a bit confusing exactly where the gimbal's at. By looking at these indicators, you can tell, uh, but just recentering the gimbal oftentimes can be quicker than trying to move it back around. So by clicking this first option, it's going to put the pitch at zero degrees, so facing straight forward, and center the yaw, so lined up with the aircraft. The second one here will just recenter the yaw, so line it up straight with the aircraft, but it's not going to change the pitch. The third option will put the pitch down to 90 degrees, but it's not going to change the yaw, so just looking straight down. And then the final option will change the yaw, recenter it, and also bring the pitch down to 90 degrees. So that's kind of our four options in the recenter gimbal menu. The laser rangefinder here. When we turn that on, we're going to see a laser rangefinder display. The first number is just the distance from the drone to whatever the laser rangefinder is focused on. The second one being the absolute altitude of whatever the laser rangefinder is focused on. And the third value, the GPS location of whatever the laser rangefinder is focused on. <laughs> Sorry to repeat myself there so many times. But we're able to calculate that GPS location because we have our aircraft's location. We have the distance from the laser rangefinder to the object it's focused on, and good old math will get us to a GPS location. There's a button there on the right side to take a screenshot, so we have that documented. You can also click on the information to copy it to the clipboard or look in the metadata of the image itself with EXIF tool to see the laser rangefinder information as well. For dual gimbal operations, we can click on the second video feed option here, and that can change what that second video option is. So right now we have FPV and a Z30 selected, but if we wanted the X-T2 to be our second gimbal, we'd go ahead and uncheck one and then check the X-T2. So in this case, we unchecked the FPV and checked the X-T2. For dual gimbal sync, we can click on that. And then by clicking on gimbal one and gimbal two, it's going to sync them together. And then you can see these dots appear for yellow and blue. So we'll go into a quick video here to show both of these features. And then we'll also show, uh, just I think it's good to show in the same video, the follow and free mode we talked about before for the gimbal. So follow mode, remember that's always staying with the front of the aircraft. And then free mode is letting the aircraft move and the gimbal stay with its current yaw position. So first off here, we'll go ahead and change that bottom right view. We'll uncheck FPV and check X-T2. And you can see that bottom right view changes to the X-T2. Next up, we'll hit the dual gimbal sync button in the top left there. Click on gimbal one and gimbal two. You can see they're not synced together right now, but now the X-T2 gimbal will move with the Z30. And then finally, I just wanted to show you in gimbal settings here, when we switch to follow mode, the same for both gimbals or free mode. So free mode, you can see the aircraft moves and the gimbal stays. So that's why you catch that landing gear. While follow, the aircraft is going to move with the gimbal. So if we go ahead and recenter that gimbal, now it is going to be sticking right to the front of the aircraft there. With the H20T, first talking about the wide camera here, you can see indicates wide camera can see our zoom field of view. Talking about our photo modes here. First one would be photo, second one is high res grid. And you can see as we adjust the zoom function, the high res grid, which is capturing a zoom photo in each of those grid cells is going to change. So the high res grid, once again, we capture one wide photo in each of those zoom photos. And as we zoom in, each of those grid cells is going to be getting smaller because each of those is a zoomed in photo. 
We'll cover high-res grid in more depth in a later video, but just wanted to show you at where it's in in the settings and how zoom influences your grid. The third option here, interval, as we've covered in our previous series, it's gonna take a photo every X number of seconds. So in this case, it would be every two seconds, the camera is continuously taking a photo. An important thing here with the H20T is the save photo option. So if we click on that, we have the ability to take a photo with all three cameras at the same time and current view. So this could be up to four photos at once. Current view saves a photo taken with the current camera view you have. So in this case, it would be wide. But if we're using infrared and side-by-side, -side, which we'll show here in a second, a side-by-side -side of infrared and the zoom camera, then it is going to be a screenshot. So just something to be aware of based on what you check here is what photos are going to be saved to the SD card. Same idea for video, when you click on save video, except current view is going to be a screen recording, not the full resolution video, no matter which video you have selected. But once again, we have the option for wide, zoom, and with the H20T, infrared. Moving into the settings here, first one being creating a folder. We can add a custom name for all photos to be stored under. After the drone is turned off, the photos will stop being stored in that folder. So if you're doing an inspection, you might want to create a specific folder for a specific structure. But just realize if you turn the aircraft on, turn the aircraft off, the folder is going to be lost. You could hot swap batteries and land and whatnot. But when you create a folder, it's good for the time that the drone stays on. Moving down to timestamp here, after you turn timestamp on, option to customize that timestamp with any of the following. You can have aircraft model, the aircraft serial number, the date, the time, coordinates, and altitude, and also include custom text. You can also move the timestamp location to top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left by clicking customize timestamp and changing any of those settings. The laser module here basically controls if you want your laser rangefinder on at all times by default or just when required. So by default would leave this on, but if there's a situation where you're using night scene and you might experience Tyndall effect, think about like headlights in the fog, particles are scattering and reflecting light, maybe you want the laser rangefinder off. And the reason the laser rangefinder is always on, even if you don't necessarily have the display on, is it helps with other functions such as the zoom camera, allowing it to focus. And our pinpoint, smart tracking, et cetera, those are all functions that use the laser rangefinder. Zoom camera here. You can see we can switch over here at the top. One of the first things I wanted to cover here is if you're controlling the aircraft and gimbal with one controller, you can hold the uh, confirm button on the right side of the RC and use the right wheel to control the zoom. So that's a nice function to allow you to control zoom without having to touch the screen and move the bar up and down. Uh, specifically here for video size, we do have the option with the zoom camera to switch between 4K and 1080p, and that's in menu, photo, video size. Also have the option for night scene here. It utilizes IR cut like a security camera, so great for low light situations. You do need to be on the zoom camera view for this night scene option to appear within the menu settings. You can see an example here of using night scene. Looking at the FPV, it is clearly dark at night. It is black and white, but it's doing this by allowing more light in that is outside the visible spectrum. So good for low light situations as I talked about. 
And just a quick refresher here, not necessarily talking about the other items here in the wrench menu that we've already talked about in previous DJI pilot videos. That's the same functions here with the MEM300 and H20, which is great. So if you want to put the grid on the screen or if you want video caption, those remain options. Camera settings here for the zoom camera. We have the auto option for both zoom and wide, but with the zoom camera, we can also use manual. Within the auto side, we can still adjust our exposure value for brightness here. We would decrease that if we want to be less bright, increase to increase the brightness as we talked about before. And on the manual side with the zoom camera, can adjust ISO and shutter to adjust your camera settings there. Moving into IR, most functions are going to be the same as the Mavic 2 Enterprise dual layout. So we can click on color palette button here and that allows us to change our color palette. You can see on the left side there, the temperature to color, what those look like. We have our isotherm settings still here as well low temperature, high temperature adjustment, and the toggle button in the bottom right turns isotherms on and off. FFC button for flat field correction, still there in the top menu. They can also get a temperature measurement with just a single tap on the screen here with the H20T. So with the IR camera selected, you can simply tap on the screen once for a temperature measurement. And it's gonna be a tap and drag for a temperature area measurement. So you can see screen tracks the finger here, but it's tap and drag. And then can you know, pull the temperature area measurement around as we discussed previously. Temperature alarm is still only going to be going off when the temperature area measurement is being used. On the top right here, we have the menu to switch between IR and split view. Split is IR and the zoom camera. The zoom bar on the right is going to still be controlling the zoom camera. And you can still see our zoom field of view here on the IR camera side. To control the IR zoom, going to use the button here next to split and palette. So just touch the button to cycle through the zoom options. Can we just have regular, which is times one, times two, times four, and times eight. So you can see right now it's on times four. It tells you that here 